Hey guys, all cars and bikes here. And after a short break, I'm back with more videos for you guys. All cars and bikes is back. Kia Proceed GT is probably the best car that Kia has to offer uh, as of right now. Of course, if we're, ca if we're counting internal combustion engine, uh, if you are not doing electric vehicles, then that would be the EV6 GT. The Pro C GT is paired with a 1.6 TGDI engine, uh, 204 horsepower with the 7-speed DCT dual-clutch transmission automatic. This is the same engine, it's identical to the one in the i20N, in the Hyundai i20N, but that one is paired with a manual 6-speed gearbox. Now, before we get to the driving part, let's talk about uh, the interior uh, small bit. These seats are uh, Alcantara. Uh, they are also the uh, the driver's one is electric, which means you can have two memory set for two drivers. So you only have to set it up like this. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but back, front, up, uh, sorry, back, up, 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 down, down. This is much. Uh, this is pretty much completely customizable and then you just press set one or set two and it's completely set on this side you have uh, your light adjustments your brightness adjustment this is the lane assist button so you can turn that off you can see here on screen i hope you can see it properly uh, if i just hold it for a few seconds it's going to go away which we're going to do of course a lane assist is a no-no for me a big no-no this is the uh blind corner blind side assist which is in the in the side mirror uh in both of them actually this is the traction control button so off and you can completely turn off esp which is what we are going to do with this car as well and with this you can open your trunk uh with the press of a button well not press but with the hold of a button Steering wheel, sporty, very grippy as well. Paddles up and down, paddle shifters are great. Automatic lights, uh, also uh, also your night lights, which is completely, completely great. This is your autopilot, so you can use this one to, uh, you don't even have to touch the steering wheel on the highway, of course. Uh, automatic, you can also put that to D and then to manual mode then you can use the paddle shifters or up and down set that to p back again sport mode we're going to use that a lot today uh deactivating uh start stop parking and parking camera ac is completely uh used by buttons which is what you guys know that i love so much is buttons so you can just press it like this and oh my lord i am the happiest person in the whole world now we're going to use it uh, on 20 because it's quite hot today uh, it's the end of September is the 27th 28th today <laughs> and it's still 24 degrees in the evening 18 11 as of time recording now uh, what else is there to do I think we just have to not stick the key anywhere break the engine is on now as you can hear, this is the sound that comes completely from the engine, from the exhaust actually. So, for a road car that's made for Euro 6 norm, this is very good. Then you can also put in the sport. And the difference is very much noticeable. Now, let's close the door, put it into normal now, because we are going to drive through the city. We are going to have our computer monitor our drive. So how many kilometers, how many liters and what time we did. You can also set it to since refueling and since uh, long term. So demo so that we can go automatic parking brake, which means that it is released and let us go. And there's people watching me because my camera looks funny, but that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> We're going to take a left here, and as we are used to, let's go our our road. The seven-speed DCT is a very good companion for your traveling on uh, and off the city, also on the highway. And what I was very much surprised was by the consumption, which is very, very good for a car like this, even though it's a 1.6 TGDI, let's say a sporty car, uh, you can classify this as a hot hatch even. Well, you could, now it's a hot coupe, hot com, hot estate car. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. But basically it's like a coupe of sorts and it's a 
It's a very beautiful car, I must say. Oh, wait, no, no, automatic now. I'm so used to downshifting myself with the pals that I wanted to downshift, but we're not gonna do that as of right now. So this car, uh, this exact car is uh, 849,980 crowns as of uh, current prices. It has the gray metallic color, which you can see in the, which you could see in the video or in the beginning. And there's everything you can have except the panoramatic roof, which is by me for me a plus because when you get a panoramatic roof on the top, the height of the car is uh, lower, but well, not the height of the car itself, but of the roof is lowered by 10 centimeters, which is quite a lot of space for tall people. And uh, this car is not exactly made for tall people. As you can see, I'm 178 and there's not much space for me up, uh, but that's for me, again, I like low cars and I just feel very much okay in this car. Uh, I'm sorry for the break in September, but I just had a lot to do. Uh, start a new job, uh, start doing a bit of uh, with more side hustles, side businesses. And there's just been so much going on that I didn't have the time nor the energy to continue, but I should be back right now. As you can see, I'm sitting in a car with my headset on and, well not headset, sorry, no, with a camera <laughs> and ready to get rolling again. Now, what I'm surprised again with this car is how uh, elastic it is and how fast it can get to 100. We're going to test that out, of course. There's no launch control, sadly, in this car, but it is still a very good car. Now, I'm just gonna step on it slightly. This is This is like what? quarter power that I'm giving it currently and the automatic gears in this car are very good and it just works perfectly the seven speed DCT is very good but I like driving more and I like using my right hand to drive so except pilot shifters I could use a manual transmission now as well this car has an incredible suspension and it just holds on in turns as you'd never think it would hold you know, by seeing the car, you wouldn't say, wow, this is a sporty car or a car that holds, but it is very, very good to say the least. It has an electronically controlled differential, which means that uh, the power in turns is transmitted to wheels separately so that you have more traction, uh, more traction in turns, basically, uh, set easily. This same differential is equipped with the Hyundai i30 and that we drove before. And the platform is not the same. Uh, of course, they are one, like you know, one company or two companies that work together, Hyundai and Kia. So the technologies used are very, very, very similar. So, for example, the ELSD, so the electronically controlled differential, is the same one that is used in the i30N. This engine, as I said, is located in the i20N, which I hope to be having uh, soon for testing, at least for a test drive, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, Proceed GT is the top version of the Proceed. You can also get the GT line, but in that line, you will get the 1.5 TGDI engine, which is 118 kilowatts, so 160 horsepower, with either a six-speed manual or seven speed DCT, this exact, uh, this exact gearbox. Or you can get the 1.6, which is the GT, not GT line, but GT, and you get the 1.6, 204 horsepower, or 150 kilowatt engine, uh, which is, in my opinion, of course, why would you get the Pro Seed GT line if you can get the basic uh, seat sports wagon with a 1.5, which is much better. Now, <laughs> I would love to do a suspension test, but there's no roads for me to do it on. <laughs> so we have to do with no suspension test, but believe me, uh, we're gonna test it out in the spirit to drive section because this car is very grippy. The tires are very good. And I, can't, I just can't wait to show you. And we're going to do a launch control though. And yeah, it's gonna be fun. So far we've done five kilometers and the, uh, the consumption is 8.8. .8. On the highway, by the way, uh, you can get as low as 5.5 or 6. If you set a uh, cruise control 
to 110 you can get to 5.5 5.7 depending on the road that you're currently traveling so that's it that that's pretty pretty awesome i would say anyway this is my uh, 0 to 100 mark again a little bit uphill so the times may not be completely competitive we're going to try it again in that one more part now uh, let's put it in the sport mode let's turn off uh start stop system as i believe there is no uh there is no what do you call it <laughs> launch control mode here so we're just gonna have to pin the brake and the throttle and hope for the best we're going to wait until this car passes because we are we are having a great time no one else behind us so we're going to do let off the uh the triangle the brake and let's do this in three two one wasn't bad at all actually that was pretty good it could be a bit faster we're going to do it again in that one place uh, which is more on the straight but this was around seven seconds which again it's a euro 6 car only with a 1.6 engine and i think that for a car its size it does the job pretty well you could describe this car as a family car family wagon for dads who have uh, at least one out of two balls. I think that's the exact comparison that we could get for this car. It's not quick in a straight line, def uh, sorry, it's not fast in the straight line, but it's very quick on the side roads, as you're going to learn in just a few seconds. Uh, what I do like is the display that it's right, that's right in front of me, 12.3 inches, uh, full of information that you need on the left side you have your fuel gauge speed you're going your uh, limits and all the road signs that you need and are uh, are very much necessary for the road this is your uh, trip information this down here is the um, temperature of the air outside or you know thermostat basically so should be this is your consumption current consumption which uh, fills in with the blue line and depending on that that's how that's how uh, much the car is consuming let's get in front of these on the right side you have your average consumption but since refueling so you can see that it copies this one with this one so mine is 9.7 but that's because i have the car for today and i'm trying to enjoy it as much as i can sport mode or normal normal doesn't say sport does this is how many rpms you're currently at 2.4 thousand rpm your uh water in the engine temperature how many kilometers it's driven and if your traction control is off now i'm going to stop talking and i'm going to tell you uh turn up your volume because we are nearing that one part that i like almost the best and let's go This car, it's not quick on a straight line, no, not at all, but the speed it has and it flows through the corners so well and it just sits on, on the floor 
absolutely amazing. Kia, this has been a wonderful drive so far. Thank you very much for letting me do this. Also, I have to say massive thank you to my new job, to Autobahn Group from Prague, uh, who also sell Kias, Toyotas, Suzuki's, Lexus, and that's it as of right now. Now, this car is willing to spin, but the traction control is not fully deactivated. Even though it says it is, it doesn't let you drive it uh, to its fullest potential. That kind of sucks, but I get it uh, and I know why that is, because still people are not completely capable of controlling the car at 100%. The, that's fine. If <laughs> I might try and take it to track because my new, uh, what do you call, my new supervisor is cool as, yes, cool as that. <laughs> now, this is kind of a suspension test for us, I'm trying to take as many bumps as I can. And in normal mode, this is very much easy. This is very much nice and okay to drive through. I have no issues with that. And if we switch to sport mode, <laughs> Oh, this, this is even better! <laughs> Why that is? No, but still, this is very good. The car uh, does stiffen a bit, the steering wheel does as well in sport mode, but the sport mode is definitely there for more power. It's going to give you 204 horsepower as soon as it can, all 260 newton meters of torque as soon as it can, and most importantly, it's going to in, in, uh, it's going to open your valves on the on the exhaust. So. It's going to sound more crisp and more uh, well, more beautiful, I might add. <laughs> We're going to do a sound test in... Uh, well, I hope to get a sound test in this video. I might forget, so I'm not going to put this in the video. <laughs> I'm currently in paddle shifting and the response is very good, I might say. Look, this is good. For down shifting, this is very good. Perhaps you think this is good as well. Of course, it's not a Formula One car, but it is more than enough at that matter. Again, for our roads, you should respect all the rules. Uh, all of this is done with paid actors and in a controlled area by professionals, so there's nothing that can happen to me because I am a professional at driving. <laughs> There's also a great addition of three buttons here. So we have the black star, the white star, and the mode button. What these do is if you press one of these, it's going to take you into this beautiful little setting and you can define, oh wait, I just downshifted down. I'm gonna put it in third again. And you can define what these buttons will do, your favorite pick. So you can put your black star to uh, give you a, to do or to put you in a in a menu of itself though so like Kia Live which gives you information about traffic gas stations and their prices uh, you can also turn off and on the display put it in a quiet mode uh, open Kia Connect do Apple CarPlay basically a lot of other stuff the same goes for the white star but that has different uh, different option and as well as the mode button and if we're ready because we are let's try so three two one weren't able to do it until the end of the straight, but already the car felt much quicker on the straight. Uh, much. It, it felt more agile, more, uh, more you know, in, in control on the straight than when I did it going up the hill. Uh, yeah. We're nearing the highway, which is, of course, a fan favorite for a lot of people, I found out. So let's do it. Uh, we're gonna put it into paddle shifters for now because we are in position of a beautiful road here. What I am missing though, one thing, is the classic handbrake, which is only electric and automatic, of course, at that same time. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> which is only automatic and does not work. Uh, on a straight line. Do you want to cross, please? 
so if you want to be doing silly stuff like with the i30N, you can't. Oh, but the fart sometimes into the DCT are amazing. Does it slide though? Question of the day. Nope. Well, it does, but slightly. But that's a good thing, of course. It's a fun thing to have it to do, to slide, but if it doesn't slide, it's better. <laughs> of course, for your speed. Now, we're gonna put it out of sport mode on the highway, please. And let's see the consumption uh, at 125 or 130 between these speeds. So basically your normal traveling speed. So let's reset our data from this day and let's see what it does on the highway. automatic mode as well well this car uh, is it's very good of course if you could get it with a six-speed manual it would be better but there's one downside to this car and that's the fact that you won't be able to get it new after New Year it's discontinuing due to uh, it not being able to fulfill some woo, some emission norm limits, which kind of sucks because these are the cars that we people like to see. Of course, you have the masses, which are well off enough with a 2.0 diesel engine, which of course is great for doing your daily drives, but boy, do you miss those little sport cars and those hot hatches. I would choose this car over any daily car, all day, every day. But at the same time, this is a very good car for daily driving, by the way. I, it is, it is great. The consumption is not that bad. And even going uphill, we are still around seven liters. And of course, this has been completely reset. So it's only for this highway port, but still 6.7, still going uphill, very good. And the feel you get from the car, you get so much response from this car. The responsiveness is very good. If there's one Kia car that I would have to choose, it would be the Stinger. <laughs> and right after that, because the Stinger is discontinued in Europe, it will be this one. Uh, do we dare try some speeds here? Slightly. Can do 200 here. Might be able. Yeah. Yeah, we did it. Okay. Not bad. Now let's slow down because the policemen are here often, and there's no car behind us, so we don't have to worry about slowing down quickly. No one here. Great. Let's continue. Uh, but we're gonna keep it cruising until the end of the straight. Uh, of course, the uh, <laughs> consumption went a bit up after this excess but still very fun car great car for daily driving and 10 out of 10 <laughs> definitely uh, for daily driving and for fun driving but I have to be completely completely uh, fuck mm, objective and not biased because I do sell Kias and this is one of these cars, one of the cars that I have to sell. <laughs> uh, I have to be objective and I have to say that there are many, many better cars for your, uh, for your daily driving that do uh, these kind of things. i30N in the Fastback edition is one of, is one a great example. You could also get a used Skoda Octavia RS, uh, third generation, pre-facelift or facelift it doesn't really matter both of them are very good with 2.0 TSI engines and even you could get those cheaper of course they are driven cars used cars but they do the work uh, very well even better than this car definitely on the other hand this car has that unique sound uh, that only Kia and Hyundai are able to do in their sport cars with the RASP engine uh, which is something that many automobiles are missing currently. Do 
you can immediately, immediately feel the difference between sport and normal mode uh, on the throttle. Of course, it's kind of I can I could compare it to the Abarth. Uh, if you do that with the Abarth, the car immediately feels more, much more responsive and much faster, and it goes much faster. There's so much less throttle that you have to apply for it to go fast. Ultimate all cars and bikes rating of Kia Proceed GT. Now, are you going to move over for us or will I have to undertake you? Thank you. Uh, the Proceed GT is a very good car, comfortable, sporty enough for families who like to live on the edge. Of course, RS6 is calling or M5 Touring is calling as well. But in this price range, I don't know, you could get a used car that provides a bit more fun than this. But for a new car with this usage, there's not really a much better to choice than we are currently sitting in. Uh, let's throw down the window. The engine sounds beautiful. The exhaust sounds great. So I'm going to give this car a chunky 88 out of 100. I can't give this more than a 90. And the Kias that were, the proceeds that were before this one are much better or were much better than the one than we're currently sitting in. And that's mainly because of the GPM that it has. Uh, basically like a filter for uh, for emissions to, you know, get across the emissions limit or not get over the emissions limit. So this car is, mm, it feels slower and it's not caused by Kia because I think Kia could get this car to work very, very well. They made it work with the Hyundai i20N, the same engine, and I think that they could do the same thing with the uh, with this car. But sadly, emissions are a thing, so that's a no-no from everyone. Now, everyone, uh, what has happened during this month? We have reached 100 subscribers, and not only that, through September, without me posting a single video, we have done 150 subscribers. Yes, 150 subscribers. What has happened throughout September, I have no clue. I wasn't here, uh, definitely not mentally. This has been a great ride so far. Uh, we're going to have more sport cars to come because I know that you guys enjoy those cars the most, of course. Uh, then again, a car like a small Fiat 500, which is coming, by the way, hopefully sometimes during October, we'll see, uh, are great as well. Two more things before we end this video. Camera, uh, great HD resolution, shows very good details. P and park brake, you can hear that mechanically. Window down and the world famous horn test. I mean, it's not electric, as Skoda has it electric, so. Thank you very much for watching this video and well, stay tuned for, for many, many more to come. Bye everyone and thank you for the support you are giving me.